Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Squadron Strike Torpedo Weapons. Now torpedoes are flat out the most complicated of all the weapons you can employ. I personally suggest if you're first starting out with this game, stick to beam weapons. Missiles can be used, but they just add a lot of stuff on the table, especially if you're like me and you like to use all of them. <laughs> so basically our situation here is uh, just like we had before, we have this uh, trusty old uh, Cutter Mark II just kind of making his way across the map relaxing and we have our Cutter Mark I who's going to be taking a torpedo shot at him. Now, now, torpedoes are declared, if you take a look really, really quickly, we go ahead and fire torpedoes during the standard fire thing, and then we move them during the movement phase after everybody's moved. So we're going to have to do our usual kind of business here as far as uh, taking an arc and stuff like that. So let's see how far away he is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, interesting. I'm actually going to be aiming where he's going to be, not where he is. That's going to matter, especially if we were doing a shot that looked kind of like this. We'd have a situation where we can't actually hit him in arc, but our torpedo can hit him where he's going right now. Interesting how that works out. So something you want to watch out for. So let's take a look at a torpedo weapon. First thing we notice is that it's gray, which means to fire it, it's going to require a single action point. Since there's no ammunition on these torpedoes, it doesn't surprise me. Next thing you want to watch out for is the fact that we have all sorts of new qualities to the actual weapon. We also have this little box, which means we have a cooldown of one. We can't fire a torpedo every turn. We can only fire it every other turn. We have this little box here, which tells us we get five thrust for two turns. That's our endurance. We are a mode one torpedo, which simply means we move like mode one vehicles do, which is very, very helpful. We have an armor one, a toughness of zero, uh, I should say an armor of zero, a toughness of zero, and an evasion quality for that last ditch shoot it down a qual uh, attack of a seven or greater, which again, I don't even know why they bother with this. It just I feel like it just makes things more complicated than it needs to be. But anyway, so if we want to fire a torpedo, we'd go ahead and declare that during the normal standard attack phase. So this is pretty straightforward. When we first fire torpedoes, it's going to inherit some of the velocity of the vehicle that is firing the actual torpedo itself. So if I were to actually flip this over and you look up at the top, you'll notice if you're firing, this is how many windows off of the nose the speed of the torpedo is going to be adjusted. Let me go ahead and flip this over real quickly. Which simply means if our vehicle was traveling five in this direction, the torpedo would leave the ship doing five before it had even boosted. So you could do some pretty crazy things like that and get torpedoes going up to like, you know, 15, 20 hexes, which is fast, but it also means you're probably going to miss. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and fire a torpedo. Now, our torpedo, we're going to be firing in one arc to the left of the nose. It's actually going to be firing there, which means we're only going to be getting 90% of our vehicle's speed added to the torpedo. In this particular case, we're not moving. So um, our torpedo, you know, actually our torpedo, I'm going to go ahead and disable stat for a second so you can kind of figure out exactly where this is going to be. It's actually going to be roughly right there if you want to think about it. Now, torpedoes, when they fire, you can choose to pivot them before kind of taking the shot, so to speak. When you're using mode one torpedoes, basically you're trying to almost follow the target. If you're using a mode two torpedo, oh boy, you're gonna to have to calculate where the target is going to be and aim at that spot carefully. It's almost not worth the homework. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll plop him here. That's where he's gonna be. Remember, he's inherited a little bit of our velocity. So we're gonna go ahead and flip to the next turn. Uh, we've done all our movements. He's gonna go ahead and move to this marker. I'm not moving. So after everybody's moved, then we get to move the torpedoes closer to the target. So now the torpedo has a thrust of five, which means it can increase its speed up to five. So in this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. After they've launched, you can choose to pivot your torpedo up to two windows. What does two windows mean? So right now, if we're facing this way, we could face this way or we could face this way. You can do that before or after the torpedo itself thrusts. Now, this is where you're going to have to be a little bit creative. How are we going to get that torpedo to hit where he's going to be next turn? Well, first of all, we're going to use all five of that thrust. So one, two, three, four, five. The torpedo is now going speed five, which means we've used half our endurance, by the way. So if we keep at speed five, that's actually pretty easy for us because that simply means that next turn he's still doing five. If we use the rest of our thrust, the other five, we've run out of endurance at the end of that turn. So anyway, so we go to the next turn, things like that. Of course, remember, he could be shooting at that torpedo all afternoon if he's got the weapons to do so. This makes torpedoes tricky. So we go to our next turn. He's going to move. Everybody's going to move like this. So now it's going to get a little bit trickier. So how do we make this torpedo hit him? 
So if you remember, he's moving five speed right now. Well, this is where things get a little bit convenient. If we were to scoot down here, you'll remember that we had this handy dandy horizontal plotting grid. We can use that up to speed five. But in this case, we don't need all speed five in order to hit him. We only need to come forward one, two, and over one. So that's going to be a total of three. That's going to be that mark right there. We can do that without even pivoting the torpedo which means this turn, the torpedo is actually going to strike. Now, if we were using the mode two torpedoes, oh boy, you'd have to basically lead the target. And if you're gonna do mode two torpedoes, you might as well go play attack vector tactical. So anyway, so um, now he would have moved, that torpedo would arrive there, and it would still have five endurance left if it needed to keep chasing. So as usual, you get to resolve your uh, interceptor fire, so he'd be trying to attack that torpedo, I would hope. So uh, when he's attacking the torpedo, he'd be using the anti-fighter beams. You'd be looking over here on your left arc to make sure that you could bring the beams to bear. We could use our interceptor points as we normally. We could do a normal attack, anything along those lines. So let's say we're going to use both of our interceptor beams. That's going to get us a total of eight damage against the torpedo. So the torpedo itself gets to roll a survival roll. Let's see, that's a four and a three. So that's a survival roll of one. Eight minus one is seven. So unlike missiles, torpedoes have a couple extra values here. They have an armor value, which we would have added to the survival roll, and they have a toughness. So for every point that you do not absorb, so remember it's going to be 7 minus 1, 6, you take that out of the toughness of the torpedo, which would also reduce its damage, by the way. So 6 into 0 would be 0, the torpedo would have been destroyed. If for some reason we had a toughness of 8, that would mean the torpedo has one health left. Keep in mind, though, it still gets the evasion roll, even though it was successfully attacked. So if we roll the evasion roll real quick, get back here. Oh, I'm sorry, we'd only roll a single die for that. An evasion roll of five would not have been enough. It would have been a destroyed torpedo. Assuming it got an eight, the torpedo would have gotten through. So where does the torpedo hit? So if you remember, the torpedo was over here. So then it shifted basically onto it. So we're coming kind of along this line right here, almost this axis. It's not quite the back axis. It's not quite the right axis. Coming down here, looking at it from this perspective, it's going to be somewhere in here. And if there's ever a doubt for these kind of attacks, the attacker gets to pick. So in my case, I like to just beat up this side. So I'm assuming it's going to come up right there. So our torpedo would now make its attack. So torpedoes have to go ahead and do the same thing everybody else does. They have to roll accuracy, so we're only interested in the range from the actual target. So in this particular case, it traveled a significant distance, so we're going to be rolling on the uh, next speed up. If you want to think about that, that's a range for the shot. Obviously, if you know it comes down here to 25, we'd only be rolling on the 25 chart. So we've traveled a significant number of blocks. I think it's a total of... We've got an eight total, so that's gonna round up to this one here. So it's gonna be four or higher. Remember, there's a profile modification, which makes it a five or higher to actually hit. So let's go ahead and scoop up our dice. Let's see here, um, that's going to be a hit. Location is gonna be location nine, and it's gonna do three penetration, three penetration, location nine. So four damage plus three is gonna be seven. Oh, hold on a second. Um, no, I was right the first time. So it's going to be a total of seven damage. It's going to be on the right-hand side. So coming over here, again, we're going to be basically coming in through here. So that's going to knock one off. So it's going to be six damage, five, four, three, two, one damage. And then we get to uh, what location did we get? Location nine. So it's going to do one location to damage to location nine. Whoa, whoa, getting ahead of myself. So it would have taken off the uniform one mount. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot of different traits on torpedoes, but at the end of the day, as long as you have something that can intercept the torpedo, you're almost always going to hit it. There is a special quality for weapons called Aegis that's uh, marked uh, down here in case you're curious that gives you the ability to attack something, go, oh, I missed, and then attack it again, which is actually wonderfully useful, especially if you're the kind of ship designed with a lot of point defense. Point defense slows the game down a little bit, as you probably observed, but it works pretty well. Now, um, what I was saying a minute ago is, what if you have a torpedo that is a mode 2 torpedo? Well, things get a little bit more complicated, because the mode 2 torpedo is going to be traveling with the same basic vector stuff that you normally do with mode 2. So in this particular case, if I were attacking this one right here, what I'd probably try to do is accumulate, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, probably 4 and 1, 
mm, with the shift. Yo, know, if we did it this way, it'd be one, two, four. That would be too much. Basically, what I would do is I'd coast, turn, and then burn a little bit so that last little bit of motion could be whacked into the side of him the same way that I did it right here. Obviously, if you're trying to take a shot that has something like this going on, that's gotten a little bit trickier. So one thing I did not show is what happens when you fire a torpedo, or a missile for that matter, at something that's at a different altitude to you. So uh, that's something we're gonna investigate real quickly. Let's say I have an altitude of 10, and he's down here at the regular. We're gonna go ahead and square him up to make it a little bit simpler. We'll go ahead and calculate where he normally is and stuff like that. So he's one, two, three, four, five, six away, but he's 10 difference. Six away, 10 difference puts it at the green arc negative. So it'd be minus 10. So if we wanted to fire a tor missile at him, we'd have to calculate what the halfway point between us would be. That's actually pretty straightforward. What we do now is we come over to the vertical plotting grid and we just plot where it is perfectly as if it is going to be along this green line here. We want to do it as direct as we can. Now the one thing you have to remember is we're taking half the distance here, because if we were firing a missile for example. So to do that, we'd find half the distance, which would be 5, mark it, and we just draw a straight line like this. So our halfway point for that missile or the torpedo, whatever it would need to be, would be located at minus 5, below where we are, and it would be a total of 3 ahead of us. So the halfway point, we said minus five, which is only going to be a single, and it would be one, two, three ahead of us. So this would actually have been the halfway point. And if you look at it from the side, it kind of makes sense from that attack. So if we were now attacking, for example, like a missile or a torpedo at this cutter here, we would know that the attack would be coming down like this, and we'd have to make sure we appropriately map that to the right arc. Like I said, it gets a little complicated in 3D, but it's absolutely worth it. All right, hopefully you found that series of tutorials fairly helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, definitely some confusion in a couple different places, but again, as you play with it, you get a little bit more comfortable with it. Enjoy.